A stern warning tonight about COVID cases in King County. The numbers are going up. And although more and more people are being tested, public health leaders say it's not because of that. It's because the virus is spreading. Como's Michelle Esteban has the warning about darker days ahead if we don't respond. I want my pre-COVID life back as soon as possible. And I know you do too. But to get it, we can't let up. In King County, the top health officer acknowledges COVID fatigue is real, but he insists now is not the time to ease up on precautions. If anything, we have to work even harder or else. If we let it get away from us now, we may be in for a very dark time over the coming months. That might be Dr. Jeff Dugin's most cautionary language we've heard in his weekly COVID updates. He warns that after a three-week decline, COVID cases in King County are spiking. The potential for a significantly larger outbreak than we've yet seen is real but not inevitable. Since the pandemic began, there are now 24,300 positive cases in King County, 719 killed by COVID. In the last three weeks, cases are up. Last week alone, 1,000 cases in King County, averaging about 140 a day. That's more than twice what we saw in late September. Everyone's getting a little stir crazy at home. I like to go out and eat. And it's easier, as the governor last week announced he's loosening some restrictions on restaurants and movie theaters. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. Whatever we have to do to stay safe and healthy. And the data is concerning for in-person learning, where Duchin says safety protocols must be adhered to. COVID will happen in schools and in workplaces and in the community at some level. It's We're not getting rid of it. There's no such thing as perfectly safe. What we need to do is take steps to minimize uh, the risk of transmission and, and protect one another to the greatest extent possible. The news is not all grim. Public health insists, remember what we did before. We helped to flatten that curve and we can do it again. In King County, Michelle Esteban, Como News. Como News at 11 starts now. I think there's a pretty good chance that it's just going to get more aggressive um, going into the election. New at 11, disturbing stickers plastered on businesses in Bellingham. Police just released new images in a hate crime investigation. There's growing concern about escalating hate speech and propaganda in this heated political season. Como's Tammy Mutasa live tonight. Tammy, you spoke to one of the businesses targeted. Preston, that's right. One of the businesses who was targeted told me that this is disgusting and unacceptable. And activists say, unfortunately, this isn't new. But the worry is that these messages of hate will only get worse in this intense political climate. I was really mad. I was very angry. You can see what's left of the swastika sticker, plastered right next to a newly painted Black Lives Matter sign on the Brandywine kitchen window. Alexa Sorter got to work and scrubbed it off. I was very angry to, to come in and find that, you know, after having this really beautiful message just having been painted and then coming in the next day to see that, you know, very frustrating. Police say the restaurant, this bookshop, and several businesses in downtown Bellingham and Fairhaven were targeted with swastikas and the warning, we are everywhere. Now Bellingham police are looking for this person of interest seen on surveillance pictures wearing a mask with a skull imprint. We're really concerned that we're going to see a serious increase in hateful activity and propaganda in language. The Anti-Defamation League says hate speech and propaganda have been intensifying in the current election climate. With everything going on right now with um, racial justice conversations coupled with a very heated election. I think all of those things are really brewing to be a very heated moment right now. Their Center on Extremism has reviewed the flyers and cannot attribute them to a specific group, but they have seen individuals online bragging about distributing them. We're not going to let this intimidate us into silence. Yeah, Mary, to pass a regressive tax like a sales tax in just over a month, that's incredibly fast. Now, it comes at a time when there's this regional approach to solving homelessness, but now you have cities opting out of using that money for homeless hotels. Said it's been a godsend. Homeless, Theodore has been living at the SeaTac Quality Inn for months because he couldn't social distance at his shelter. Staying on a mat on the floor in a church. But federal COVID relief money paying for his room and hundreds of other ones is going to run out. What's going to happen, do you think, when it ends? I have no idea. I have no idea. That uncertainty may have ended today. And to move um, 2,000 people experiencing chronic homelessness on our streets into housing. By buying hotels and nursing homes, 
currently on the market. The reality is the sales price for hotels is very deflated right now. To pay for it, the King County Council voted 8-1 to raise the sales tax one-tenth of one percent effective January 1st, taking advantage of a rare opportunity the state gave local governments to raise the sales tax for housing needs. No expense of construction, no delays, no bureaucracy. What we're doing is what the public has been clamoring for. It's estimated lower income households would pay $19 a year in additional tax and upper income households $66 a year and up. But eight of the county's 38 cities have voted to use the tax for other housing purposes and not follow the council's hotel spending plan and what happens when COVID disappears. Talking to tourism people, they are also concerned because when tourism gets better, they will not um, have the hotels. There's a push to adopt a regional approach to solving homelessness and get people like Theodore into housing, but the sales tax shows not everyone agrees on how it should be done. I'm going to encourage in every way I can our colleagues and friends at the cities to work with us to make sure that we are doing the best we can for the folks in the most need.